Hello everyone, my name is Doomfish, in today's video I'll be showing you how you can make a TNT cannon and improve some other TNT cannon designs that you probably already know about in Minecraft. So here behind me, I've got this TNT cannon design, it's incredibly simple, and it's probably one that you have either seen someone build or build yourself, and all it is is a row of dispensers here with TNT in them, one dispenser with TNT at the end, and a stream of water, that if we go ahead and push this button, we'll see that this TNT gets pushed to the end. Another TNT comes out, and our TNT gets sent flying out into the distance, and it blows up some blocks about 100 blocks or so away from our initial TNT cannon to our explosion. And there's a lot of different ways that we can improve this design or make some modifications to it so it serves some different purposes, and I'll be showing you a couple of those right away. So first up, to build the design we saw earlier, we're going to place down 8 solid blocks in a row like so. We're going to go ahead and place down some blocks to the side on one of the ends like this. We're going to place down a little U-shape of 5 blocks total at this end. And then on the inside, we're going to place down our dispensers, 7 on each side, like so. And we're going to make sure they're facing in, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side over here. Also, make sure these dispensers are filled with TNT. And then, when all these dispensers are in, we can go ahead and place down our water bucket at the end right here. Now we can go ahead and place down one more block at the end of this water stream, place down a dispenser facing upwards on top of it, like so. And then on each of the sides, we're going to place down a row of solid blocks, should take 9 blocks on each side, just connecting up these to this, so we get another row of solid blocks on either side, like so. And we can place down redstone dust on those rows, like so. So we end up getting something that looks like this, where we have these two lines of redstone coming out behind each of these lines of dispensers. Now we can go ahead and place down a solid block on this block right here, directly behind the water stream, place down a button on it, like so and then go ahead and place two pieces of redstone dust connecting these lines to this button right here. Now we need to connect this line of repeaters to this block right here using redstone, and we can either keep it like it is right now and just use some redstone dust to connect it up to here, and this would leave seven repeaters total, or we can go ahead and add in two more four tick repeaters like so. This is pretty much the maximum time you can have on your machine right here because the longer you set this for, the longer the TNT will be in the air, but of course, if you set it too long, like for example, we put in a tenth four tick repeater, like right here, it would last too long to where this TNT would probably end up exploding before it gets flung out by the TNT behind it. And again, if you want to use less repeaters in this, you can, so maybe we could do something like six or five, and this would make it to where the TNT lasts a little bit less time, so it spends more time on this spot right here, and less time in the air, and usually that'll cause it to explode midair, and if that's something you want to do, you can do that just fine. But for now, we're going to use all 9 repeaters, and I'll show you what that looks like right away. So now when we press the button, we'll see that just like in the earlier example, we see this TNT get pushed to the side, and we see that our TNT gets fired, shot off into the distance, and it'll explode right about there. So there is some difference in these two explosions, for example, even though these machines are identical over there, the one on the left and the right have the same exact timings and everything, we'll see that this explosion on the left is a little bit deeper than this one on the right, which means that on the right side, our TNT actually exploded midair, whereas this one didn't. Also, the TNT on the right was shot a further distance, and we might see that this one sort of shot towards the left, whereas this one was a lot more straight on in line with our machine over there. So there is a lot of randomness that can happen with this basic design, and there's definitely a lot of issues that we can solve. So one modification I would make is to place a temporary block on top of this dispenser right here, and then place one block to the left and one to the right of it like so, and then break that middle block. And what this will do is it'll get rid of the variance that the TNT that's being shot out has in the left and right directions. So then when it gets fired, it fires much, much straighter, and as you can see, it's pretty much exactly in line with this right here. And as you can see, with our earlier example, the TNT didn't just disappear, it exploded before it actually reached the ground, so there's really no visible explosion. So to prevent our TNT from exploding midair, we can go ahead and go around 5 or 4 blocks in front of the suspenser right here, place down around 8 blocks or so, like so, and we can go ahead and make a platform up here about 5x5 five five using solid blocks. And what we should see is that when we go ahead and break our temporary blocks and get to firing our TNT cannon, that the TNT fired out of here will not actually go flying in the arc, but instead will get flattened out by this, and it gets shot out this way. So we can see that it lasts on the ground a little bit longer because our fuse on these redstone repeaters right here are a little bit longer, but that's fine, and it goes a little bit shorter, but it will guarantee that our TNT lands on the ground. And of course you can adjust this, you can put the platform higher so our TNT flies further, you can have a smaller platform if you sort of know exactly where your TNT is going to land, 
But anyway, it's a basic concept of having a platform out here that prevents our TNT from flying too high in the sky. But of course, if you want your TNT to explode midair, then you don't really need one of these. Now if we want our TNT cannon to fire a little bit further out, we can add some more TNT dispensers on the sides of this water stream. To do that, we're going to place down some rows of glass blocks above each of these right here, and we'll see that we have 8 by 8 on each side, gives us 16 glass blocks, and then go ahead and place in some more dispensers on each of these like so, right above the dispensers we've already placed, and make sure they're facing into the water stream. And one thing I'd also recommend is to go ahead and break these two dispensers right here, closest to the end of our TNT cannon. This is because we can actually get some variants where the TNT that comes out of these dispensers on the end can actually go on top of this block right here, which would end up in having our whole system here sort of destroyed, and we definitely don't want any of that. When we're done with this, go ahead and place down some more blocks on the sides of this like so, basically repeating what we have down here. So we're going to make a big sort of U-shape along all the sides of these dispensers and then connecting up above where our button is right here. So one thing I would do is go ahead and break this button right here, place one block down here, one block down here, one block here, and then we're going to place some one tick repeaters here and here. So this way our repeaters make sure that these TNT dispensers are on the sort of same timing circuit so they all explode at the same time, giving us the maximum results out here for our TNT cannon. Also, we can place in some redstone dust on each of these blocks right here, and some redstone dust on the same side over here. Now take some slabs, and on this block right here, we're going to place down a slab on the top half of that block. We're going to place down a temporary block here, and then to the right, place down another slab, break that block, and place a slab on the top half of that block right there. Now go ahead and place down some redstone dust on each of these slabs like so. We can place down one block right here, and then put our button on the end of it like so. And now if we press the button here, we can see that we have basically twice the amount of TNT coming out here and going into our water stream, and then we'll see that our TNT gets flung much, much further. And again, we can move our roof up here a little bit if we want to make sure we have even more power. We can go ahead and move this higher up around this area, and our TNT will get flung further. But again, the more TNT that you add here, the further this will go up to some ridiculous extents, and we can go ahead and continue this pattern so we can place more glass, more dispensers up here, and basically just continue up this staircase like we saw earlier. So you can place down another temporary block like here or so, or maybe like so, and go ahead and place another slab here, and basically do the same thing up all the way to the build limit if you really wanted to. But do keep in mind, if you do go high enough, the TNT might not even be able to reach this water stream down here as it falls down to the ground, and it gets a little bit less efficient the further you go up, because our TNT won't be pushed to the end as much as the TNT at the bottom here. So the higher you go, the less efficient you're going to be going. That's pretty important considering that it takes a lot of TNT to fire this thing once. In our current build, I believe it takes around 27 TNT to fire one shot of this, and of course TNT is pretty difficult to get in survival Minecraft. If you want more power per every shot in your TNT cannon, what we can do is go ahead and replace this, which only fires once, to a machine that fires about five times every time we press the button. And to do that, all we have to do is go down to this repeater circuit right here, go ahead and knock out these repeaters, and then these first three repeaters out here. We're going to place down a sticky piston like so. I'm going to go ahead and break down these two pieces of redstone as well. And then we're going to go ahead and place down one observer right here. We're going to place down another observer right here like so, and then we're going to go ahead and place down three pieces of redstone dust right here. Now what we'll see is that when we press this button, our repeater timings will be shorter and we'll actually see several pieces of TNT coming out here, and they all get sort of shotgunned out. This is very unpredictable as we can see some of them landed here, some of them landed further out this direction, and that is pretty much okay with me because it is pretty awesome to see all these pieces of TNT flying out at once, and it can definitely cause a lot of havoc further on down. If we go ahead and calibrate this a little further, you can see that all of these sort of get fired off. And we can put some additional repeater timings in here, but it causes a little bit of issue if we want our sort of TNT to fire later. If we put in, let's say, let's say we put in these two pieces of redstone repeaters right here, we'll see that by pressing the button, we won't actually get as many sort of firings. We'll only get one firing of TNT because our repeaters can't handle all the pulses that are being sent through here. So if you want to do that, you'll have to use one tick repeaters, which causes, you know, a lot of sending this signal back and forth a little bit. Or we have to add in more repeaters over in this direction. But you get the idea. We can go ahead and connect this back up. 
and we'll just go ahead and see that it fires a lot of pieces of TNT and this actually uses a lot less TNT than it would just adding more sort of dispensers up here because our earlier design used 27 TNT per fire well this one should use about 33 to 34 I believe assuming you have a little bit of variance in how many shots you can get off here so it uses only a little bit more TNT but it fires a lot more out of the front here per every firing of this button so those are just a few of the modifications that you can choose to make to a basic TNT cannon to make it a lot more interesting we can change the firing mode over here so it fires in a blast where 5 to 7 TNT can come out of the end. We can add some more dispensers over here to make sure our TNT fires a further distance. And we can add a little platform up here to stop the TNT from flying too high up in the air. Now you can add some more modifications to this, there are definitely a lot more creative uses you can have. But this is just a sort of introduction to a couple of the changes you can make to a TNT cannon to make it a little bit more efficient and a little bit more entertaining. But as mentioned earlier, pretty much all of these modifications, with the exception of just putting some blocks up here, can make this TNT can a lot more expensive. So unless you have a large supply of TNT that you can actually use to fire off into here, I would definitely recommend being a little bit more careful with how you use your TNT in your cannon. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't be afraid to leave a like, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.